Hey everybody, welcome to part three of my Deploy OpenSense at Home video series. In this video, we're going to focus on hybrid NAT and UPnP to allow for open NAT for gaming. Before we begin, a brief primer on what these things are. NAT, or Network Address Translation, is the service on your firewall or router that will translate external IP addresses to internal IP addresses. If you recall in the last video, we made an alias called RFC 1918. This is exactly what NAT is translating between. Let's say that you're connecting to a remote web server through your firewall. Your device might have an internal IP address of 192.168.1.2. The remote web server might have some random public IP address. Same with your router. When the remote server goes to send data back to you, it can't just send it to your internal IP address. It has to send it to the public IP address associated with your router. Then your router will forward the response to the original PC that sent the request. Each device that you have on your network has 65,535 ports available. And this includes your router. The ports between 49152 and 65535 are dynamic ports meaning that when your computer tries to connect to a remote web server, it can't just open a connection on port 80. Imagine if you could only load one website at a time because someone else was already using port 80 on your router. Instead, the router will assign one of these dynamic ports to use the connection, and the destination web server will respond to whichever port was assigned by NAT during the connection. The downside to this for gaming is that these connections have to be opened by the device in your network and the remote web server can't initialize any connections to you. This is good from a security perspective, but sometimes games utilize a peer-to-peer -peer connection that requires others to be able to connect to you directly. This is also why those devices struggle to connect back to you if you're using a dynamic port rather than a specific port designed for that game or service. Now, if you look up guides on how to achieve open NAT through your router, whether it's OpenSense or not, a lot of them recommend using port forwarding. Port forwarding will open a port on the firewall and forward all traffic that comes in on that port to an internal device by its IP. There are a couple of problems with this. The first is that this port will always be open and forwarding, even when you're not using it. That does pose a bit of a security risk. The other is that you have to have that port forwarded to a single IP address on your network meaning if you have multiple devices that would potentially use that same port, they cannot. UPnP, or Universal Plug and Play, will allow your device to tell the firewall when it needs the port opened, and the firewall will open what is essentially a temporary port forward. While there are still security concerns to using anything that opens rules in your firewall, this is the best way to achieve open NAT with OpenSense and minimize the exposure of the network to the internet, as when the device is no longer using the ports, they will be closed. In order for this to work properly, we will also enable hybrid NAT for static port mapping. So let's take a look at how to do this. So if we log into the firewall, and we go to Firewall, NAT, Outbound, we're going to change this. Yours should be set to automatic outbound NAT rule generation. I have mine set here to hybrid outbound NAT rule generation. This will keep the automatic rules. This will allow us to create some rules as well. And you can see I've got a couple of rules created here. We'll circle back to these in a few minutes. Let's go install UPnP. We're going to go to system, firmware, plugins, and wait for this page to load. Once it does, you can see I already have the OS-UPnP plugin installed. If you don't already have this installed, if you scroll down a ways, this list is sorted alphabetically once you get into the things that aren't installed, and you should be able to find it down here and just click the Install button. Once the install is complete, refresh the page. And now if you navigate to Services, you should see Universal Plug and Play available on the left hand side. Let's open that up and go to Settings. We're going to check the box for Enable. 
allow UPnP IGD port mapping, allow PCP NAT PMP port mapping, and we're going to set the external interface to WAN. And then we will set the internal interface to LAN. Now, in the future, if you have additional interfaces, you can set them here, whether they are internal, meaning they are inside your network, or external, meaning they are gateways on the outside of your network. But for this example, this will work just fine. From here, we can scroll down the user specified permissions. The first permission that I like to create is this deny rule at the bottom. This rule essentially means deny any internal port from any IP address from being mapped to any external port. By putting this rule at the bottom, we don't allow anyone on the LAN interface to use UPnP who isn't defined here in the user specified permissions. From a security perspective, we want to minimize exactly what devices have access and can utilize UPnP. So the way that we do this is by creating these specific allow rules. Now, you can get more strict than this with your allow rules if you want to take the time to identify every specific port and service that whatever device is going to listen on. For example, Xbox will use a different list of ports than PlayStation or than Steam. But I found that this works well enough for me and I'm okay with the risks that come with allowing the UPnP devices to connect to a pretty wide range of ports. In my network, I actually defined a subsection of devices that I want to use UPnP with by using a subnet mask. You don't necessarily have to do this unless you have a bunch of devices that you intend to have access to UPnP. But if you go online and you find a subnet calculator and you play with it a little bit, you can identify a range of IP addresses that might be narrow enough for you. For example, uh, I use everything in this .208-28 block. Uh, I'll put what the range of IP addresses is for that on the screen now. And essentially assign static IP addresses to each of my devices that I want to have UPnP in that range. But if you want to add a single device or add them individually, you can do exactly like this rule at the top here. Allow ports 1024 through 65535 to be mapped by this specific IP address, slash 32, the slash 32 cider just essentially means only this IP address on firewall ports 1024 through 65535. And then when we're done, we'll hit save and apply. Now, at any time, if you're wondering if UPnP is working, when this is all said and done, you can come back here and go to the status section to see what ports are currently being mapped by what devices. As you can see here, currently nothing on my end. Now you may recall, we need to set up that static port mapping. So we're gonna go back to firewall, NAT, outbound. Again, you can see I've got those two same ranges of IPs created here. But just to show you how this rule is made, we'll hit add. We'll leave this set to the WAN interface. We don't need to change the TCP IP version or the protocol, but we will change the source address. And what you're going to put in here is whatever you used for your UPnP mapping of IP addresses, whether that's a subnet with a CIDR or just a slash 32 single IP address. The only other box we need to check in here is down here is this static port box. Give it a description hit save and apply. Your rules should essentially look like this. We can see we've got WAN interface, the source IP address, NAT address is set to interface address and static port is set to yes. That should be all there is to it. From there, you should be able to do a test NAT connection from your Xbox, PlayStation or Nintendo Switch 
it may have to run the test twice in order to get the open NAT, as the first one will request the connection and see that the connection was not automatically forwarded. But the second connection will show an open NAT. This should give you full open NAT functionality when playing your games online. In the next video, we're going to take a look at using GeoIP or GeoBlocking to create aliases and firewall rules that leverage country tags to block traffic coming from or going to specific countries. So stay tuned for that. Until next time.